Hello and thank you for tuning into the Progressive Parent YouTube channel. Today I want to talk about how to respond to the very familiar argument that goes, well I was spanked and I turned out fine. Before we get started on what I think is the best way to respond to this argument, here's a couple of things to bear in mind. Well, first of all, it's not a valid argument because you could meet a long-term smoker who'd smoked 40 cigarettes a day for 40 years and they could say, well, I never came down with any smoking-related illnesses. Even though that might be true, that would not prove uh, or rather disprove the body of evidence that says, broadly speaking, smoking large quantities over a long period of time is very detrimental to one's health. Similarly, the studies on spanking are pretty much ubiquitous that it's harmful. 93% of the studies conducted agree on that, which has been called an almost unheard of consensus in child rearing studies. In other words, people who research child rearing find it hard to agree on just about anything, but that spanking is harmful is just about as close to an established fact as you're going to find. The only outcome from spanking that some people could consider a positive outcome was that it gained immediate compliance. But of course, anything could gain immediate compliance. I mean, you could threaten your children with a gunshot to the head and perhaps they'd do whatever you told them. But that wouldn't necessarily suggest that it was a good or optimal approach. Second of all, well, you know, you probably did turn out fine. Most of us were spanked and uh, many of us turned out fine. But you can never really tell how much better you might have turned out if your parents knew other approaches to take. So only one in three long-term heavy smokers die of lung cancer. And if you choose to take that risk, you take that risk with your own health. However, if you spank a child, you're taking a risk with their state of mental health. And I'm sure all loving parents would agree, you don't want to take unnecessary risks with your child's state of mental health. That seems logical. The final consideration is kind of the moral consideration, which is that even though we have this body of evidence, which has been referred to as an almost unheard of consensus in child rearing studies, you shouldn't really need evidence to know that it's wrong to hit your children. I mean, we don't need evidence to uh, agree that it's wrong for a person to hit their wife or for a w boss to uh, hit their employees. We don't hit our friends to get them to comply with what we'd like them to do and uh, we don't hit our associates, we don't hit our significant others, we don't hit our waiter and least of all should we hit children whose brains are still forming, whose personalities are still forming and hitting them can have a formative effect which is detrimental to their development and it can, you know, damage the relationship between the parent and the child. So, well, you want your child to love and respect you and do what you say out of trust for you because you've earned your authority through giving them consistently good guidance. But in your back pocket, you've always got this card that you're carrying around which says, if you don't do what I say, as a last resort, I can always hit you. That changes the whole dynamic of the relationship. And how are you going to turn around and tell that child not to be violent after you've demonstrated that you think in certain circumstances violence gets results, violence can solve problems? Because that's the message you send out when you hit a child. Your child can universalize that and think that in some circumstances they can use violence. Now, all those arguments are true and there are arguments that are logical and they should appeal to reasonable people, but I'm not sure that pointing out those arguments as a starting point is the best approach to take to change someone's mind if they happen to be an advocate of spanking. Although the approach that I'm going to suggest in any way preclude bringing up those arguments when it becomes relevant. So the essence of the approach that I'm going to suggest is that you want to impress upon 
the person you're talking to that when someone hits a child, they could be impairing their development in two ways, in fact. One is the act which we've spoken about, all the risks of spanking and that it models violent behaviour and it focuses the child on the consequences of their actions to them rather than the consequences of their actions to other people, i.e. if you do something wrong, you get hurt if there's someone there to punish you rather than the consequences to other people. But there is a second facet, and this is really the important one, because your eloquence in making this case really makes or break whether you are going to get through to the other person or not. The second point is, by spanking a parent, misses out on the opportunity to model healthy conflict resolution that does not involve spanking. It does not involve violence. It might involve better understanding the child's motivations for acting in whatever way was considered worthy of correcting and then impressing upon them why their actions have negative effects to others rather than focusing their attention on the negative consequences to them. And that may teach far more valuable lessons that they can use later in life, unlike violence, which isn't acceptable between adults. And I'm going to suggest that the best way to get across this essential second point, which is that there are alternatives to spanking that really work and produce better results, is to ask the other person for an example of a situation in which they think spanking is appropriate to correct behaviour. And this will give you the opportunity to demonstrate the alternatives to spanking with a practical example. And I'm not talking about the old, well, what if your child tries to run across the road and you hit their hand to tell them not to, you know, that well-trodden out example. Uh, I believe nowadays they have these things called fences, which are really good for stopping children running across the street. And of course, if you're close enough to hit your child's hand, you're close enough to pick them up or just stop them from running, go down to their level, explain how dangerous it is, all those things. There would never be any need to hit a child in that situation. Although I know some people might do it out of reflex, you'd want to apologise for that later and explain that you just lost control in that particular moment and didn't know how else to protect them. I'm talking about something that is construed as a serious transgression which someone might want to hit their child in order to correct their behaviour for. Let's take the example that I was given by a friend who said that they ran away from home and in order to show them how severe the situation was, his parents hit him. You want to take that example and say, okay. So your parents wanted to hit you to show you the severity of the situation. To show you that it's something particularly serious and they're very concerned about it, concerned enough to hit you, to deter you from doing it again. First of all, relate to the person. You might say, Okay, I agree that is a very severe circumstance and the parent's very concerned about it. They want the child to understand how severe a circumstance it is and ensure that they won't repeat the same behaviour. Paraphrase whatever their justification might have been, then you can address their point. So under these circumstances, I might want to say, well, I understand that. But you don't actually need to hit someone to show that the situation is very severe. You can do the same by using a stern voice. You take the child into a private room and sit them down and say that this is something we really need to talk about. And you say, you know, your mum and I or your dad and I were extremely concerned. We were worried, we were upset. You express all these things and they contribute to an atmosphere that shows that the situation is severe without the use of violence. Most importantly though, you'd want to get to the motivations behind the child's behaviour and find out why they did what they did. What are their circumstances? Why did they feel like they had to run away? Why didn't they feel like they could come and talk to their caregivers about it instead? 
And this can't be like an interrogation. It has to be done with genuine concern, love and care. Now, this approach doesn't just achieve the aims of the spanking advocate by showing the severity of the situation and deterring the child from running away again. It brings the child and the parents closer together. It creates an environment that should improve the child's conduct in general. Now the child feels like these are things that can be talked about within the family and this really stresses prevention rather than cure. I really hope that this podcast has been helpful. Please share it with anyone you'd think it would help to put it in your groups. Um, let's get the word out. Let's get really good in encouraging people to stop hitting their children. Please subscribe to the channel and you can also join our group on Facebook. And if there's anything that you'd like us to discuss in future sessions, please let me know.